Good evening. My name is Mina Chang, and I hold position of Chief Medical Officer. It's a pleasure to have you tonight with us in person. And tonight we gather to honor and remember our departed ones and to honor a special person. Here are some highlights of our recent accomplishments and ongoing services. We are proud to provide hospice services to over 1,500 patients and families each year with 56 residents from Danville benefiting from our care in the current year. Our community-based palliative care program has shown significant growth, having served over 115 patients. Founded in, 19, founded in 1977, Hospice East Bay is the only not-for-profit hospice located in Contra Costa County. We have been committed to providing high-quality, compassionate care to all those needing our services, regardless of the ability to pay for it. Our service area includes all of Contra Costa County and part of Alameda and Solano counties. We are very proud of the unique programs that we can offer due to donors like you who support us through events like our Tree of Light ceremonies. Some of these programs include music therapists who use music as a therapeutic tool to reduce pain and anxiety and bring joy to families. The Veteran-Centered Care Program, with your support, we have a full-time social worker to help veterans and their families through their unique end-of-life needs, getting the support and benefits they have earned through the services they have provided to our country. And bereavement services are now in-person and virtual. We are very proud that these services are available to anyone in our community regardless of whether their family was on service with us. We also operate six thrift shops that play a vital role in supporting our programs and we gratefully accept donations of gently used items. And to enhance convenience, we have established an online store where you can now shop from the comfort of your, of your home or while on the go. We are honored to be part of this community and if you have any questions, please come to see me or any of our staff or go to our website at www.hospiceeastbay.org. Thanks for joining us today and your continued support of Hospice East Bay and our commitment to the communities that we serve. I also want to thank our partners and volunteers who have supported uh, uh, the, our ceremony today, including our Danville partners, in the Sustaining Light Partner, Rodney Associates, and American Asphalt. The Guiding Light Partners, Don Ritchie. Shining Light Partners, Summit Financial Group, and Millie Day. The Bright Light Donors, Diane and Don Rett, Frank Carr, Barbara Chavez, Don Rascano, Pat Cabler, and Anne Smilinich. Special thanks to Anne Smilinich and the GFWC, Danville Women's Club, Diablo Duo, and Mayor Robert Storer and the city of Danville. Thank you. Thank you for having me here this evening to share my personal thoughts about this incredible organization. And I'm joined here this evening with Vice Mayor Karen Stepper, who will help me present a proclamation to Dr. Chang. I have Council Member Newell Arnerich on his way. He should be here in a few minutes. And I want to begin by saying uh, thank you for coming out tonight. Um, each of us have been touched in our own very special way. Each of us have experienced the grief when loved ones pass. That process, as amazing as it is, is not always well understood, not always appreciated, and it's not something we love doing alone. We look for comfort and relief from family and friends and loved ones during those difficult moments. Those family and friends are there for us, certainly try their best to support and help. But many times, they don't understand the process. 
When we are faced with the very difficult decisions, as we are trying to understand the five stages of passing and the most difficult stage of transition, there are these incredible angels from hospice who are right there alongside of us each and every step of the way. Their hand on our shoulders, helping us when we stumble, and always there to reassure and explain the process as it unfolds before us day after day. Their arms are wrapped around us. They listen, they care, and they are always there throughout this amazing process. In my case, as in so many of your experiences, these angels sat with my mother, listened to her, talked to her, supported her, and made her feel like she wasn't going through this alone and helped her transition comfortably with dignity and respect. They made her feel special. They made her feel cared for. And they gave her a great deal of comfort in the most difficult time of her life. Hospice was there for my family as, as it is for your family. I have thanked Hospice so many times privately, and you have been in my quiet prayers each and every day. And I have thanked each one of those angels personally who came to my mother's home and showed their amazing kindness and who showed my mother how to pass and transition with dignity and grace. Each of us, I thank you privately, and this evening, Dr. Chang, we thank you and your organization publicly. Tonight, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts, and we thank you for all that you have done for so many families in our community uh, when they have needed your most and your kindness will never be forgotten. You will always be a wonderful memory for me and my family during one of the most difficult times in our life. And for this, we will always be grateful as a family and a community. Thank you sometimes just never seems like enough. Um, and, I, and we can never repay your love and your generous time that you shared with us and unconditionally throughout that whole entire process. And for as long as I will live, I'll never forget what you did for my family and so many families in our community. Thank you and God bless each of you during this holiday season and throughout the year. And thank you, Hospice, for everything that you continue to do. I will ask Vice Mayor Stepper, Dr. Chang, if you would join me at the podium. Um, I have my challenge point for you, and there's seven words on the back of my challenge coin that I think are really important for anybody in a leadership capacity or somebody who works with our community. And that begins with community, knowledge, honesty, leadership, respect, character, and integrity. They're all the words that you would use to describe hospice each and every day. Dr. Chang, thank you very much for all that you do. And then we'll have a proclamation here for you as well. You gotta have my <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you would stay up here, Dr. Chang, while we read the proclamation to you. We are so glad that we have a hospice thrift store right in the middle of Danville. It is really important that people are able to support it. And we are very honored by the faces we see tonight that we have seen several years in a row. And I personally have a brother who needs nine and a half hours of help a day for my sister-in-law to, to take care of him. And so when I look at what it means, I know every week when I talk to them how much we value your services in Danville. Whereas hospice and palliative care provide patients and families with the highest quality pain management and symptom control, caregiver training, and assistance and emotional and spiritual support, most often delivered in the home, allowing patients to live fully up until the final moments, surrounded and supported by loved ones, friends, and committed caregivers. And whereas every year, more than one and a half million Americans are living with life-limiting illness and their families received care from hospice, and palliative care programs in communities throughout the United States. And whereas professional and compassionate hospice staff and trained volunteers, including physicians, nurses, social workers, therapists, counselors, health aides, and clergy provide comprehensive care 
making the wishes of each, each patient a priority. And whereas providing high quality hospice and palliative care reaffirms our belief in the essential dignity of every person, regardless of age, health, or social status, and that every stage of human life deserves to be treated with the utmost respect and care. And whereas hospice and palliative care providers encourage all people to learn more about the options of care and to share their wishes with family, loved ones, and their healthcare professionals, now therefore be it resolved that the Danville Town Council hereby proclaims the month of November 2023 as National Hospice Palliative Care Month in the town of Danville and encourages citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at the end of life and to observe this month with appropriate activities, respect, and programs. In witness whereof, we here, here to set our hands the 17th day of November, Mayor Robert Storr, myself, Vice Mayor Karen Stepper, Arn Newell Arnrich will come forward. He just received, he just got here and he has benefited greatly from hospice. And um, David Fong and Renee Morgan are joining you in March. So congratulations. Thank you so much what you've done for our community. Dr. Amina, we appreciate that. Thank you. It's been an honor. Thank you very much. Thank you for everything that you've been honored for our community. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, thank you, Karen. Um, Karen, by the way, is our mayor. If we will be back next door here um, three weeks from Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Wow, right. that's coming up quick. And we really appreciate everything that Mayor Robert Storer has done. I just want to share with you, um, most of you are here for one reason that you've all had a connection to hospice through use in some way or knowing somebody or a friend. How many of you have ever had somebody that was at Bren's house? Well, that's a special group. And I would just share with you the importance of particularly hospice here, and it's not the same everywhere, is my father-in-law who was dying and I was, my wife and I were responsible to take care of him. He was living with us and he got a diagnosis from being healthy one day to a diagnosis of something that had been hidden for many years that he had 14 days to live. And he looked at us and he said, you got to figure this out. I don't want my last memory of me dying in your house. Because we said, no, this is great. Family will be there. Our kids will be. We have a dog. It's just, you know, it'd be this. And um, lo and behold, somebody from organization called hospice showed up at John Muir hospital and said, you know, we have an alternative. And we went by and looked at it. And I have to tell you, it happened from about nine o'clock in the morning and by one 30 in the afternoon, he was there. And when he moved in, he said, I told you not to take me home. And I said, Paul, you're not. He says, but there's the fireplace. There's the doors. And we had went home and got all of his personal effects and they allowed us, I don't know if you still do this, but they allowed us to put up all of his photographs, paintings, and things on the wall. You couldn't ask for a, a better, last dignity of life and allowed every family member to have that personal one-on-one -on -one without everybody else around. We could gather away from that. So the message is that if you know somebody that has that circumstance, and it's not for everybody, um, this is unique, and this is why we're all here to try to help support, also help try to raise money and things like that. But it's really, really an, an incredible organization run by really great people. Thank you. Thank 
Good evening, I'm short, so I'm gonna stand over here. I'm Barbara Chavez, and I'm with the Daniels Women's Club. We've been uh, supporting this event for, I don't know, well over 10 years. And um, it's my pleasure to continue to come and um, participate in this event. So I'm gonna read this poem, When I Am Gone, Author Unknown. <clears throat> When I'm gone, release me, let me go. I have so many things to see and do. You mustn't tie yourself to me with tears. Be happy we had so many beautiful years. I gave you my love. You can only guess how much you gave me in happiness. I thank you for the love each of you have shown, but now it's time I traveled on alone. So grieve a while for me, if grieve you must. Then let your grief be comforted by trust. It's only for a while that we must part. So bless the memories within your heart. I won't be far away, for life goes on. So if you need me, call and I will come. Though you can't see or touch me, I'll be near. And if you listen with your heart, You'll hear all my love around you soft and clear. And then when you must come this way alone, I'll greet you with a smile and say, welcome home. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I have the privilege of reading the names of your loved ones tonight. I will do my best to pronounce them correctly, but know in your heart, have them sound like you know they should be. And again, once again, it is my privilege. I'll start. Lloyd and Dorothy Anderson. Carol Ann Klein, Jeffrey Atnip, Lynn Atnip, Now Baraclow, Betty Baraclow, Michelle Janine Batesel, Dr. Anthony J. Barandino, Marie K. Barandino, Judy Berendino Moses, Frank J. Bondi, Clara Bondi, Ramsey Bedford, Conrad Bredlew, Shirley Britton, 
Ken Burr and Buckler. Frank Burroughs. Laverne Burroughs. Virginia Caquera. Gloria Carr. Kareen Carr Golden. Alice Carter. Louis A. Castillo. Karina Chavez. Sandy Cooper. Helga DiMartini. Deidre. Tim Dietrich. Gloria Ellis. Billy Espinosa. Darlene Freiler. Lou Fields. John Fox. Camille Giladucci. Gina Goforth Kozo. Thomas Gold. Catherine Grip. Jerry Gundoffer. Ed and Winifred Hagenson. June and Bob Herring. Jeannie Hughes. Todd Jenkins. Olaf Johansson. Dick Kabler. Kelly Kabler. Richard King. Thomas Kelly Klein. Lori Laws. The LaBelle family. Bob Lee. Thomas Lopez. Brian Losey. Cesar Lukeshi. Ruth Lucy. Randy Lutz. Ron Lutz. Jack Marlowe. Margaret May. George McClellan, Leon and Sarah Meyer, Alma Faye Moore, Shirley Nival, Bob Nival, Les Nishimura, Julia Ong, Richard Pollock, Jerome C. Rascano. Bill and Ania Rett, Sharon Ritchie, David Ritchie, Samuel and Florence Ritchie, Irene Rudd, Jewel Rudd, Susan Russell, Merle Sanchez, Doug Scott, Teresa Scott, Robin Sherwood, Barbara Slyker, Gloria Smith, Warren Spiker, Elma Spiker, Douglas Stanley, Bernice Stanley, Douglas E. Stanley, Ernest Storer, Lorena Storer, Giselle Story, Janice Spavin, Francis Deathpick, Frank Turner, Charles Wallach, Ronald I. Wallace, Carol Anderson Warwick, Richard Wentner, James G. Wilson, Bennett Yee. I'm just welcoming you all out tonight. A little uh, iffy on the weather, but I think we're going to be just fine. Um, we often close with a poem called We Remember Them because we always will and we always do. If you will repeat the refrain after each sentence I read, I appreciate it. In the rising of the sun and in its going down, 
we remember them. In the blowing of the wind and in the chill of winter, we remember them. In the opening of buds and in the warmth of summer, we remember them. In the rustling of the leaves and in the beauty of autumn, we remember them. In the beginning of the year, and when it ends, we remember them. When we are weary and in need of strength, we remember them. When we are lost and sick at heart, we remember them. When we have joys and we yearn to share, we remember them. For as long as we live, they too shall live. We remember. Please join us back inside if you would. For a few minutes, we have hot coffee. Where's Anne? <laughs> <laughs> and I now present to you the beautiful Tree of Life. <laughs> we have coffee and cider and uh, wine cookies. and cookies and all sorts of goodies inside. We'd love to have you stay and, and chat with your friends, talk about your loved ones, whatever. Um, please join us.